Good afternoon. This is Dr. Walters with a brief vodcast on John Dewey, Listening and Democracy. The vodcast is based on the article by Leonard Wax, John Dewey on Listening and Friendship in School and Society. This is actually one of my favorite articles, one that I'm happy to share with you. It places John Dewey in the context of the Chicago School and its concerns, especially John Dewey's concerns with education, democracy, and a special kind of education that was characteristic of that setting noted in his work on reflection. Wax notes in his listening overview that there is a distinction between one-way listening and transactional listening. One-way listening is where the audience hears and the speaker speaks. Transactional listening requires an exchange such that the roles of speaker and listener are somewhat interchangeable. There's a link between transactional listening and cooperative friendship in a way reminiscent of Latin classes, classical writer Cicero, who spoke of the reciprocal goodwill and disinterested friendship, a topic of deep concern, again, in the interest of democracy. There's a link between cooperative friendship and democracy. One way listening is characterized by passive reception, contents that are predetermined by an external authority, little if any interaction with the minds or the responses of the readers or the listeners, and there are ready-made solutions that actually interfere with thinking. The famous example, a classic example of this is the teacher pouring the contents into a funnel or a bottle that represents the heads of the students. In transactional listening, the, there's a recreation of active engagement that is characteristic of many homes and of the play situation. There is an elimination of the separate poles for speaker and listener and a mutual coordination of means and ends, here referring to the communication as both a goal and an end, since communication is one of the most pleasurable forms or, or ends of human existence and human interaction. It's constructive and that the contexts are constructed and reconstructed through a conversational give and take. Transactional listening is at the heart of Dewey's philosophy, according to which humans are living creatures who seek new things and a perpetual renewal. Humans possess flexible and ever-changing organizations of their energy. They are charged by all their end goals, conscious and unconscious. Humans are always pursuing a multitude of end goals which come into and out of view from moment to moment. Humans are made for communication. Speakers want to, be, want to communicate, they want to be understood, and understanding means coming to a shared orientation toward the object or the subject of their communication. Creative reconstruction of words and vocabularies in the process of communication requires taking the role of the other, a topic that we will take up again later in the work of George Herbert Mead. But the mutual awareness in communication results in a transactional conversation where messages are shaped for particular listeners and both the speaker and the listener are altered by the transaction. This suggests, again, um, the rather taken for granted but, but often missed opportunity for one person says something and another person says something in response to what the first person said. For Dewey, conversation is at the heart of cooperative friendship, and conversation therefore aspires to the status of an art form. Conversation is practical, 
but it is also consumatory and delightful. It overcomes isolation and creates experiences of emotional closeness. The most satisfying of all human pleasures is conversation. Conversation creates friendships, and transactional conversation generates both the means and the end of democracy as a social form. Democracy is person-to-person communication. It's part of the many-to-many or wrapped up in the many-to-many conversations that take place in local communities. The group-to-group communication results in a fellow feeling among citizens of multicultural industrial nation states. Communication is the essence of democratic societies and the social interpenetration of meaning through conversation and communication. It is the essence of communication that is voluntary cooperation across boundaries of ethnicity and social classes. Communication moves across both of these boundaries. Technology has changed communication to a certain extent some in ways positive and other ways negative. Earlier forms of communication were oral and in neighborhoods. In contemporary societies and more modern societies, in the machine age, the mass communication or that kind of communication which is really one to many, such as uh, television, radio, or mass communication. For Dewey, only the community provides a context for sharing emotions and ideas. So whereas mass communication is one way or one to many, communication within a community is many to many. Digital technology has changed the capacity of the technological world to engage individuals and groups in real and authentic communication and real and authentic communities, or at least we think so. This type of technology, and especially Web 2, will embody and promote the kind of transactional listening in conversation and can or has the capacity to revitalize our democratic communities through this kind of two-way, group-to-group, many-to-many, one-to-one conversations. These are at the heart of our democratic communities.